we've started talking about things going in circles, and uh, tonight we're going to look at two specific examples, horizontal circles and vertical circles. Um, in both of these cases, we are going to assume that the object's going to be moving at a constant speed, unless it says otherwise. I don't think we'll get to that. So we can always assume that at any point on the circle, its speed is going to be the same. So let's start with the horizontal ones. They're a little easier. A horizontal flat circle. So this is like a circle on a table. So uh, just a reminder from the other video, at any point on the circle, the velocity is going to be tangent, like so. And as another refresher from last night, the force uh, needed to change that velocity is always going to be pointed inward, like so. So, horizontal circles are nice. Uh, let's talk about a car on a racetrack. Uh, we have a car, like that. Let's say that uh, it's at the rightmost point on the circle, and the velocity is going into that into the page. The little circle in the X denotes into the page in physics drawings. So, the forces that are acting on the car, the weight, and the normal force. Those two are going to be equal because the car is not flying up off the ground or falling through it. And so at this point in the circle, I'm turning left. In fact, I'm turning left the whole time since I'm going counterclockwise. So, my force is acting to the left. Remember from last night that the centripetal force is always an existing force. The force that keeps a car on a track uh, is going to be friction. So that frictional force is my centripetal force. Now I can do the sum of my forces is ma. Uh, the weight and the normal force aren't going to matter since they're equal to each other. So I get that my centripetal force is equal to ma sub c. Friction is equal to mu mg in this case, and my centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, same as it always is. And that's that. Um, we will ask you for mu, we will ask you for v, we will ask you for r. That's pretty much how those are going to go. Um, we'll do one more example. Let's talk about a ball on a string on a table. So the setup is something like there's a bar or something in the middle of the table and there's a loop of string tied around it and the ball is just spinning around this bar. So when we draw a free body diagram, now this is also going counterclockwise, and we're looking at the rightmost point again because I like it, I guess. Just like the car, there's the weight, the normal force, and the centripetal force. So in this case, the force being applied is from the string. The force pulling it towards the center is the tension in the string. So once again, we'll do the sum of our forces. Tension is the only force acting uh, in the x. So tension is equal to mv squared over r. We'll just ask you to find the tension in the string on that one, and maybe how fast it goes. That's about it for horizontal circles. For vertical circles, uh, this is a tall circle that's going in the y-axis. So it's like I was playing with them today. Um, the thing about the vertical circles is you have to take the weight into consideration because there's not a table or a road to balance it out. So uh, the two points that we're most interested in are the top, the highest point, and the bottom, the lowest point. So both of those points are going to have weight pulling down. That's the way that the weight pulls. Now there's, it's, say it's a ball on a string. There's going to be a tension force pulling towards the center of the circle for both cases. So let's do a free body diagram for the top. We have the weight and the tension pointing in the same direction. It's accelerating downward. Remember that in a circle, uh, the acceleration is always going to point towards the center of the circle. Same goes for the vertical circle. 
So the sum of my forces is equal to mv squared over r. So since they're pointing in the same direction, and they're pointing in the same direction as my acceleration, I'll call them both positive. Positive t plus mg is equal to mv squared over r. That's about it for that. Um, there, we might ask you to find the minimum speed required in order to keep the object moving in a circle. So, at its minimum speed, the tension at the very, very top is zero. So when t equals zero newtons, the object is at its minimum possible speed. So zero plus mg is equal to m v squared, and that's the minimum velocity squared, divided by r. So when we ask you to solve for that, those m's go away. This function is mass independent as well. We get that the minimum velocity is the square root of g times r. Okay, that's everything to do with the top point. For the bottom point, uh, there's a common mistake that goes on here. So we have the tension pulling up and mg, the weight, pulling down. So y'all have had a lot of practice with the static problems already, and so the temptation would be to say that acceleration is zero. It is not equal to zero. The acceleration is up because it's moving in a circle. That acceleration always needs to point inwards. So you can't say that the acceleration is zero. In fact, just looking at it, it looks a lot like an elevator problem for an elevator that's accelerating upward. There's the tension has to win against the weight. So the sum of the forces is MA, the T, the positive, because it's in the same direction as the A, minus the weight is equal to mv squared over r. Um, another sort of weird thing about centripetal force is all of the forces pointing towards the center uh, during a free body diagram contribute to the centripetal acceleration. So if, uh, if we were to ask you for the centripetal force, the magnitude of the centripetal force for the top part, it would be that in its entirety, T and MG together, because they're both pointing inward. And then for the bottom part, um, it would just be T, because T is the only part that's pointing the correct way.